Finally. Okay, let's see what made the papers. The Time 100 was announced today, and the list is diverse and eclectic and fantastic, and I loved these covers. Check this out. A shout out to the frontline nurses and some other heroes also made the list, and comedians, influential fingers, figures, fingers, <laughs> there's fingers on the list, um, all 10 of them, and uh, world leaders. And I just want to thank Time for keeping it classy and this institution going. So check it out on Newsstands Fridays. I always get really excited for this. I love the person of the year, too. Okay. This story is so fun, and I can't wait to talk to everyone about it because the researchers of the University of Kansas say that they have scientifically determined how is the most, or what is the most effective flirty face. Listen, I mean, this is important. If anyone wants to flirt out there, they showed men um, videos of women uh, making a variety of flirty faces uh, to determine which one sent the clearest signal. I think this is interesting. And uh, I got to give a shout out to the men working that day. Probably not their worst day at their job. Um, all right. So the results are the number one most effective flirty look is head turned to one side, tilted down, smile with their eyes, and then like romantic right in there. OK? Yes? Am I doing it? Okay, well, let's, let's kick it over to our VFFs. Who has got a flirty face? Come on, guys, do it with me. All right, are you ready? Yes? All right. Head down to one side, tilt down, eyes smile. Oh, you know what? Oh, my God, you look so good. You look way better than I do doing it. Uh, does anyone have a good flirty approach? Are you Shannon? Yes, that's me. <laughs> Shannon, you are giving it. Are you looking for a date? Because I think you're about to get one. <laughs> I'm actually married. <gasps> well, then uh, go straight to your husband, because I'm certainly on his side. And um, give him that look, because it's, it's effective. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Shannon, for showing us the actual face instead of my goofy one. Thank you so much. All right, <laughs> next up. When I told the producers and the writers, you know, we're all a team here, and we just said, like, we need to do things with dads. So we came up with GDP, the Good Dad Program. Yay! And we're going to kick off this signature series with a dad who founded Dads Married to Doctors, an organization of fathers married to medical professionals. Please welcome husband and father of three, Curtis Webster. Hi, <laughs> Curtis. Night. Okay, so your organization has reached 4,000 dads in 25 countries. Tell us about it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It has been an amazing time. So when we were going through residency and coming out of upstate New York, my wife and I, we had two kids in tow, moving to a brand new place. At that point, I was looking around, trying to figure out how to handle all the new debt, the new income. You know, at that point, we actually had three kids. And I said, wow, my wife is so busy working nights and weekends in the emergency room. She's my, she's my hero. She's a superhero, saving lives, being on the front lines, doing all these great things for folks. She represents for the family. And here I am in the background struggling, trying to figure out how can I best live this DMD lifestyle of being the best husband, father, and man. And so I figured there had to be other guys out there that could help me figure out how to live this lifestyle better. And that's when DMD was born in 2014. I have like a cartoon heart just beating hearts in the eyes, hearts coming out. You're just, oh, uh, please give a TED talk and a master class. So with three daughters, Curtis, what's a typical day of dadding look like? Oh, it's amazing. So three young girls, 11, seven, and five. And we do everything from trying to stay healthy and fit, especially sitting behind the computers all day, cooking. We'll be painting nails. I don't have them painted right now, but we'll be painting nails. <laughs> we'll be going out on walks, just doing everything we can to immerse real life with education and make every, every day a learning moment. What my wife and I agreed early on, we wanted to establish anchor points. So let's have a ton of fun, but let's also make sure we're integrating work and real life responsibility so that we can learn how to balance all those different aspects. So it's, it's so much fun, it's a crazy life. <laughs> Curtis, I mean, when we talked about kicking this program off of GDP, 
Never in our wildest dreams would we think we'd meet someone who would elevate it to the level that you have. I can't thank you enough. Will you please come back and help us give suggestions for a thing we do called The Weekender? Because I'm always looking for things to do with my kids. And that's sort of what gave me the idea for this. I wanted to celebrate dads. And also, it's as parents, we're always looking for like new ideas. So right. let's keep doing this. You are our hero. And if you have a dad that you want to shine a light on, go to our website for the GDP Good Dads Program. Curtis, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Oh my God. Ah. And finally, our next story may upset you if you are over the age of 30, because the 1980s now count as ancient history. American Girl has just added a 80s doll to their historical collection. And we have her here today in the studio. Please welcome Courtney. Oh my God, Courtney, it says you hail from the dinosaur age of 1986. Look at your cool high-waisted denim skirt and pink scrunchie. You know that's gonna end up on the cover of Bot Magazine next month. <laughs> By the way, I don't even need to do an accent. Let's face it, I'm stuck with this Valley Girl accent for life. I was born in California in the 1980s in the 818 area code and I don't have to fake it. All right. I love your 80s accessories and bangles, lip smacker and lip balm, a see-through phone, so choice. Again, totally my voice. This is just me. Not playing it up. No hyperbole. You even have a caboodle for your hair ties and makeup and other trinkets. Righteous to the max. By the way, in your future, Courtney, when you have to talk to a high-powered CEO and you're like, no, really, bet on me. Invest. I got you. It's going to be great. Listen. Courtney, I really think we could have been friends. I mean, here's a pic of me around your age. I was all up in the club that night, a term you'll learn in about a decade and a half. But for now, let's just say that you're stuck with this voice for life. And you know what? It's not so bad. All right, Court, I'm sorry. We're out of time. I didn't let you get a word in edgewise. You gotta come back, all right? Come back? Yes, okay.